This is our Forex blog for February 10th, 2012. Let me set it up so we see the beginning of the day here. And so like most days, we want to buy the strongest currencies versus the weakest. The real-time statistical trend shows up on the top in histogram form, and it's made up of five of our best statistical tools. We've been working in the Forex markets for six years and have come up with many statistical tools. Our favorite five are made up in this and three of them measure the direction. For example, what percentage of dollar pairs are going up? Very high percentage here before midnight and pretty much most of the day until three and then the rest of the day. And also the other two measure the intensity of the direction. So anytime a very high percentage of dollar pairs are going up and they're doing so with incredible intensity compared to the last 20 days average volatility for each bar of the day, it is uh, you know time of the day sensitive. So if during the active times, the market normally moves, let's say, 8 pips per bar. Uh, if it's moving 16 today, that's double volatility, so that affects the averages here. Underneath that, we had a daily, weekly, and monthly trend. Now, I would prefer, if the dollar had a lot of strength today, that the daily trend be up and the weekly trend be up. I don't really care what the monthly trend is because it can take one to two weeks sometimes to even change direction. Uh, you know, what's more important is the real-time trend. The daily and weekly are the next important. I prefer you know, when, whenever possible. You can see the dollar and yen both had strength today, but the dollar's trend went up even before midnight. So between the two, I'd prefer to trade the dollar. More time frames are pointing up, uh, and you want to buy the dollar versus, you know, the weakest ones. Um, in the last week or two, the Australian and New Zealand have been the strongest ones, and they've also gone up statistically a lot. So they were due for a pullback. That's why it's very important to look at your daily charts. If you see a, a trend that's been going up for one, two months, or even, you know, three to five straight days up with a lot of pips, you know, two to 50 to 500 pips up with no pullbacks. It's due for a pullback. So you can usually expect that day to remain weak for most of the day, even though the weekly and monthly trend is up. Again, prefer the ones that have a daily trend that's down, as you can see on the Australian and the New Zealand. So you really wouldn't want to sell the, the euro when you have the CAD after three, on all time frames down. That's a very high probability one. You know, looking for buys in the dollar cad after three made a lot of sense. So let's let's start with that one. Dollar cad after three. Here's three o'clock. It's up near our upper containment band. I don't like to buy above the upper containment band. Sometimes I'll do, but never really more than 20, 25 pips above it. So this would be the last time that I would have bought this currency today. But again, we're looking to buy after three. This one just broke above the previous day's high, so it's a pretty high probability trade to buy right here. And unfortunately, that trade didn't work. It's right at a Fibonacci profit target level. And you can see as you got into this trade, as it started going up, notice there's no strength. So most of the time with trades that don't work, you pretty much know it immediately within the first 5 to 15 minutes. So in that case, if you're in a trade and you put your stop underneath the low here and it starts going up, you know, even 6, 7 pips, move your stop in half. That's pretty much where the trailing stop also got yanked up to, and you would have only lost five or six pips. And then it pulled back again. And notice there's no weakness here, and the trend's up. So I like to buy it when basically trend lines are broken over the bars high. And you can visualize this. You don't need to draw trend lines in your chart. Uh, and again, I liked uh, 15 to 25 pip pullback. So uh, let's just say from 90 all the way down to 70. It's 20 pips. So that's within, and it's, it varies per currency. Currencies that don't move as much, uh, I would need less of a pullback. Sometimes 12 pips is enough for me. Currencies are very volatile. Sometimes the pound yen is extremely volatile. You might want a 20 to 30 pip pullback before you buy it, just to lower your risk. You know, a lot of times, though, once you buy it, when it starts going up, the momentum of moving up continues pushing it up. And this one goes right back to a monthly pivot level, the upper containment band. Uh, and I usually at the upper white band, if it goes sideways here for a while, I'm going to get out of half, and then I'm going to let the trailing stock get out of the other half. Um, so probably made about 12 pips on that one. I don't usually want to buy uh, again after getting burned. I will wait for it to kind of prove to me it's not going to come down. Then when it breaks out, I'm going long again. And I want to draw my fibs on the last wave up from here to here to get an idea of where the fib profit target is. And it shot through the first area, shot through the second. Rarely do currencies go above the 1.618 fib. So when it went up here and went sideways, you're going to get out somewhere up here at 22. But the last trade, you're in around 95, you made 27 pips. You know, and your stop would have been right underneath the low here. You probably only risked 12 pips, and you made two and a half times what your risk is. 
Again, the Australian and New Zealand have been statistically up too much, so you want to look to sell uh, the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. This one already began its downfall earlier today. <clears throat> this is one of those trades where, unfortunately, it's already fallen uh, before midnight. It's underneath the lower band. We're at major Fibonacci areas here. And historically, this has been a strong currency. So in all honesty, I wouldn't have probably taken any of these trades earlier. When it finally made this nice little move up here, I might have considered this for a small profit here. And you, usually when you see a double bottom right here, especially at a Fibonacci profit target level, notice it's not that much underneath the lower white band here, but it really is here. It's about 25, 35 pips underneath the band, whereas right here it isn't. This is a much higher probability trade, much lower risk trade in my opinion, and the last wave down was from here to here. And most of the time, the first or second Fib target is where I'm going to get out of this at. So I'm not going to be greedy. There's a monthly pivot level here in my last likely FIB target and Fibonacci retracement level. There's a Fibonacci confluence right here along with the half number and a monthly pivot level. So I'm going to get out of this trade somewhere around 54. So that last trade was good for about 30 pips. Let's take a look at the New Zealand dollar. Now this one's a little bit better than the Australian coming into today because it's not already uh, deeply underneath the lower white band. It is resting though at Fibonacci profit target. And because the weekly monthly trend are up, you know, uh, I'm going to be a little hesitant to sell this. When it comes down to this level and doesn't, and it has two chances to go up once, twice, it doesn't go up, I might sell this breakdown right here. And unfortunately, it doesn't really go that much. It goes down and kind of goes sideways. Notice these bars right here, statistical weakness falls off. So most of the time myself, if a trade doesn't really explode my way, I'm going to exit half of it, probably four or five pips here. Uh, and I might give it a little bit of more room. Uh, it didn't stop me out here, but when it came back down again, there was half the weakness of before. So I'm going to probably exit, put my stop right above the previous bars high right here, get out at 85. Um, you know, then I wait for a pullback. Didn't really break this high. I might short this again right here as it starts going back down. Came back down to the low again. Falls off a cliff with no weakness. Small profit. And I would expect at that point, because of the weekly trend having been up so much and the monthly trend up, I would have expected a bounce. I didn't even get one. So again, this is a pretty high probability trade right here. It's not even underneath the lower white band. You have your last uh, draw from here to here. And notice, it pretty much almost to the pip, it went right to that level. So we're short at uh, 86 and out somewhere around 55. For about 31 pip uh, win with your stop right above the bar's high. Let's look later in the day. Later in the day, the yen was clearly stronger than the dollar, uh, and one of the weaker ones was the pound. So you could have been looking after 9 o'clock for some pound-yen uh, sells. And notice, again, the lower containment bands down here. Came down to a monthly pivot level, tried to bounce, and then kind of went sideways. So this is a pretty high probability trade when it breaks down right here. Uh, the last little mini wave down was from here. And again, notice almost to the pip, that's where it stopped. Uh, short at 33, out somewhere, you're never going to get every pip, probably out at 17. You only made about 10 or 11 pips there. Yeah, let's take a look at this same chart using uh, um, six pips per bar chart. I, I find that these are much more effective. And earlier in the day, when the currency came down, the hourly moving average is a wonderful place to look for trades. Like when it's underneath the hourly right here and breaks above it, you can go long here with a small loss, go long here, uh, somewhere around 70, and notice the trailing stop got you out at 05, 35 pip win. And it pulls back down to the hourly right here. Usually it's going to find support. Typically I'll buy when it goes above this bar's uh, high. You know, even though sometimes the trailing stops above it and it went up a little bit, it stayed uh, weak and, you know, immediately came down. I usually try to move my stop up a little bit. I would have lost five or six pips there. Then when it broke underneath the hourly, came back up and couldn't get above it, this is also a very high probability place to, to sell. And you have a very clean uh, area to draw your fibs on. And notice, again, to the pip is, is where it hit before it went up 15 pips. And this is one of the reasons why I kind of like uh, my rule of at least a 15 pip pullback. Uh, anytime you find uh, an explosive move on a range chart, three to five bars up followed by one red bar, when it goes one pip underneath that bar's low right here, you would get short at uh, 9 o'clock and 59 seconds at 122.50.
with your stop a pip or two above the high. You're not even risking 10 pips in this extremely volatile currency. You want to draw your fibs on, uh, I would say, from here to here. And this is a great place to get out. It came down and then went right back up. I'm usually going to get out of at least half my trade here, and then the trailing stop would have got me out uh, at 31. But the short area was at 50, so we made 20 pips on half, maybe 25 pips on the other half, while risking only 10. The key to trading is small losses, bigger wins. And when your wins are one and a half, two times on average bigger than your losses, uh, and that's pretty easy to do when you factor in a lot of trades, you're tightening your stop once it starts moving your way. Even though the trade may turn into a loss, you have half the loss of what you in initially intended. And again, a lot of times the currency moves enough that you're moving uh, your trailing stop moves to break even or even you know, maybe two or three pip loss or three pip win. So that's why, you know, you can, if you follow our methods, uh, your goal should be two times bigger wins and losses.